My name is Donnell Gasparini, and I'm the Adopt-a-Pond coordinator here at the Toronto Zoo. And with Adopt-a-Pond, we work to conserve the reptiles and amphibians, as well as their habitats, that exist right here in Ontario. And today, I'm here to go through with you um, how to move a frog, a toad, a salamander, a newt, um, any amphibian species that you may find while you are out and about in the outdoors. And now, it's important to remember that generally, when you see wildlife, you don't want to interfere, you don't want to touch it or bother it. You want to give it its space and observe it for the beautiful creature that it is. But sometimes, if these animals are in harm's way, um, it is, can be necessary to move them. And so, just a reminder that whenever possible, please do not pick up or touch wildlife. And now, when it comes to amphibians, um, it's really important to remember that they have very delicate skin and they use their skin to breathe. And so when we're handling them, it's, it's very important to make sure that you do not have any chemicals on your skin. And that could be anything from body lotion, bug spray, sunscreen, anything like that, um, any perfumes that could be um, passed on to the skin of the frog, the toad, salamander, whatever it may be, um, that could interfere with their sensitive skin and with the breathing that occurs across it. And so whenever you're picking up an amphibian, um, another step to take when protecting their skin is to make sure that your own hands are wet. The best thing to use when making your hands wet is water. And so for me today, I'm just going to wet my hands in this pond that I'm standing in. But if you are somewhere and you're not standing in the middle of a pond like I am, you can use water from a water bottle um, or another source of water, perhaps a drinking fountain, um, whatever you can get your hands on or in that is wet um, and that contains no chemicals. So now that my hands are wet, um, I actually I've already caught this toad because as I'm sure many of you know, these animals can be quite skittish. So we've got him here, a beautiful green frog. Um, and so what I'll be showing you today is picking him up out of this container and then putting him back into the water. Whenever you're moving wildlife, you wanna make sure that you are not moving them very far. So this would be a scenario um, where perhaps this frog was traveling on the road or the path just outside of the pond and then needed to be moved back in um, just so that he would be safe here. And something also to consider is that with something like a frog or a toad that is very mobile, they can hop and they can jump quite far. Um, sometimes all you have to do is walk, um, walk them into where they are going. If you approach them, they will very likely take some big hops in the opposite direction. And if that opposite direction is very good habitat, like a pond, all the better. All right, so now that my hands are nice and wet, I'm going to slowly and carefully pick up this frog. And we've got him in the container here with some water to make sure that he's always hydrated and that his skin stays moist, which is very important if you're ever moving an amphibian. Um, so if it's not a very quick move just from, say, a roadway to a, a wetland that's right beside it, you want to make sure that you house them in something that will keep them moist the entire time. And so I'll put him down. I'm just going to open the safety latch here. And then you'll notice with frogs and toads, they can get pretty worked up and they'll start hopping around. So you really just want to move in gently and cause minimal disturbance to the animal. So here we go. Now I've got this frog in a very loose hold between my hands, which as I mentioned earlier, I used the water from this pond to make them wet. And so I'm really not grasping onto the frog or holding him tightly at all. He is within the space between my hands. And that's important, again, as I mentioned, amphibians are incredibly delicate and you just wanna make sure that nothing you are doing is going to harm them. So now that I've got the frog in my hands, um, he's trying to, to hop around a little bit, so I'm just gonna move him very close to the water and I'll let him go right here. So there he is. And I'll just lower him into the water. And now he's safe and sound.